Hello again everyone, Marcus here. I review stuff today. I'm reviewing the song Teardrop by Massive Attack. Now this is kind of one of those combination videos where there have been people who have uh, requested this song on the channel, but also this is also part of my ongoing series where I'm listening to uh, songs that come from albums that are on Rolling Stone Magazine's list of the 500 greatest albums of all time. Now I don't know if you guys realized, but because uh, I certainly didn't, uh, that Rolling Stone sort of um, re-released or I guess released a new list uh, in late 2023. And so uh, my plans to make it through all 500 albums have sort of changed. And so now I'm just kind of skipping around uh, doing songs and albums that uh, just kind of speak to me as I scroll through. So <laughs> with that said, this album is number 383 on the list, it's uh, Massive, Massive Attacks Mezzanine, uh, which was released by Circa slash Virgin in 1998. Uh, it says here, the Bristol, England collective that invented Trip Hop, Daddy G, Mush Daddy G, Mushroom, and 3D got even heavier on Mezzanine. They turned the Cocteau Twins' Elizabeth Frazier into a soul diva in Teardrop, and Angel is a six-minute ride into the abyss with the legendary reggae singer Horace Andy wailing over levy busting drums, cinematic strings, and blasts of guitar. We like reclaiming the guitar, Daddy G told Rolling Stone. People say black music shouldn't have heavy guitar, but who invented that heavy guitar shit? Jimi Hendrix. So, all right. I've never heard anything from Massive Attack before, so I'm going into this one pretty blind. And, you know, just hoping for a good song. So with that, I say we jump right in. Again, this is Massive Attack, Mezzanine. Hopefully we enjoy it. Let's do it.
that was interesting. I, you know, I think I was, I was going into it expecting some, you know, some heavy shit <laughs> based on that little description that we read. Uh, and it was, uh, actually pretty chill instead. So, um, but Hey, I still, I still really enjoyed it if I'm being totally honest with you. So let's break it down piece by piece. Like we always do, of course, starting with those lyrics. So, I do want to read this little about section that they have here on Genius. Usually, you know, they write some good stuff here. So it says, uh, written in 1998, Teardrop is arguably one of Massive Attack's most popular singles, reaching number 10 on the UK singles chart. It features vocals by Elizabeth Fraser of the Scottish band Cocteau Twins, who is known for her ethereal vocal effects and often indecipherable diction. Yeah, I definitely catch the, you know, the etherealness of it all. Uh, definitely in this one. So, uh, Teardrop began life as a simple harpsichord riff plucked by Neil David Davidage. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I apologize. Uh, Davidage, one April day in 1997. Mushroom, who was the first in the band to hear this solitary riff, took an immediately like an immediate liking to it, and he had Neil Davidage set it. Uh, set to further work on it, adding somber piano chords and beats. Definitely caught the, the piano chords throughout, which I thought were really like effective, I think, in kind of driving uh, the song home for what it was. The working title for it uh, at this time was Do No Don't Mushrooms. Uh, Mushrooms, whose attachment to the song was very high, number one choice for a vocalist for the song, was none other than Madonna, who Massive Attack had previously worked with back in 1995 on I Want You. However, both 3D and Daddy G, who had both now heard the early demo of the song at this stage, had another vocalist entirely in mind, Elizabeth Fraser uh, of the Cocteau Twins. Uh, wow, there's a lot of information here. Uh, okay, let's... Uh... All right, we can we can finish it out here. In the two against one split, eventually Mushroom lost out, though not before sending the backing track for Teardrop to Madonna, who was apparently in love with the track and was disappointed when the rest of Massive Attack informed her that they already had a vocalist for the song. This is just one of the many occurrences one could cite for Mushroom's gradual dislike for Massive Attack and, of course, gradual departure from the band in 1999. Wow, okay. Uh, while recording the song, Elizabeth Frazier learned of the death of her friend and former lover, Jeff Buckley. Man, we love Jeff Buckley here on this channel, so that is uh, very sad that she was, I guess, knowledgeable. I guess Not knowledgeable, but, you know, that they were friends, and it's just obviously it's hard to lose a friend. And again, the, even a former lover, I'm sure it sounds like they uh, were at least still on speaking terms. So this song is used in the TV series House, Cold Case, and on season one of Prison Break. I've never watched any of those shows but it definitely felt to me like it's one of those songs that you would hear on a TV show, especially a very like dramatic TV show. So it's kind of funny that, yeah, it was used for, for a few of them. Uh, there was controversy over the songs used in House MD, and eventually after a dispute with Fox Broadcasting Company, the band discontinued its use in the show after its first season. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's take a look at those lyrics. Uh, love, love is a verb, love is a doing word, fearless on my breath, gentle impulsion, shakes me, makes me lighter, fearless on my breath. I actually really loved that very first part of the first verse where it says love, love is a verb, right? Something that you have to do. Uh, it's an action, right? Love is a doing word. Uh, I mean, very simplistic in the way that it's written, I feel like, but really impactful uh, in, in just the meaning of that. Um, teardrops on the fire, fearless on my breath, night, night of matter, black flowers blossom, fearless on my breath, on my breath, black flowers blossom, fearless on my breath, teardrop on the fire, fearless on my water is my eye, most faithful mirror, fearless on my breath, teardrop on the fire of a confession, fearless on my breath, most faith, faithful mirror, fearless on my breath, teardrop on the fire, fearless on my breath. So I, I'm imagining the fire is just like all the shit that's happening maybe maybe it was related to jeff buckley's death right i think he said the the little about section said that this happened around the same time so uh teardrop on my on the fire it's like the fire is sort of all this grief i'm feeling and then obviously like teardrop because i'm crying but it's like as you seek to find closure you know it is hard to quench that fire and it's like it's like putting a teardrop again in like a bonfire it's not going to really make a difference and so um, that's kind of how I'm reading it, but I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, you're stumbling in the dark, you're stumbling in the dark. Yeah, I mean, lyrically, I, I think there's there's probably a few different ways that you could take it. Uh, to me, it, it speaks of, of love and loss. Um, 
and I liked it. I'm, I'm going to give it two thumbs up for the lyrics. Why not? As far as the instrumentation and vocals go, you know, I think, um, I'm already forgetting her name. I'm, I'm bad at names. Elizabeth Frazier, I think she did a really great job. Again, sort of that the breathy singing style, the uh, very ethereal style, I think really worked here. And I think a big part of that is because... Um, like the drum beat, I think throughout was fantastic. Again, those piano chords, I think gave it gave a, a nice uh, level of sort of solemnness to the song. Uh, just overall, I think all the instrumentation kind of came together to make like a very uh, introspective feeling um, instrumental uh, assembly, assembly, if you will. And then her her um, her vocals, I think, really just drove it home. I, I think this was a fantastic song. From start to finish, two thumbs up from me. As far as replay value goes, you know, obviously this one is a like, you know, got to be in a certain mood type of type of song, I think. Uh, but at the same time, it is sort of chill in the sense that it doesn't ever get too like, I think, heavy. If you're not really listening to the lyrics, I think you can kind of just put this on and kind of kick back. Uh, but it's also one of those that when you really kind of start listening and sort of applying your own meaning to the song, it can be like a, you take it to a bit of a dark place, right? So this is one of those that's like. Listen to it in the right mood, but I, I think it definitely makes my playlist and I'm excited to hear it again. So with that, I'm going to give it a thumb up for replay value. Overall, a great song, uh, a great request. I, I had some requests for this specific song uh, and in my opinion, another great entry into this series. As always, guys, hope you're enjoying it. Hope you're uh, still with me here on the channel. I know I've been away for a little while. Um, uh, motivation's a hard thing, <laughs> so, uh, but I'm back for now, hopefully I can keep it going, uh, and, and again, thank you so much for watching, hey, as always, if you enjoyed the video, uh, consider, you know, subscribing, commenting, uh, liking the video, just all those normal things that you do on YouTube for your favorite YouTube channels, hopefully I'm still one of those, um, and then, of course, if you'd like to see more of me, just, you can check the description if you'd like to follow me on Twitch, TikTok, or Instagram, all right, guys, that's gonna be it for me, hope you enjoyed the video, Hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.